scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Let your hearts be open to worship the Lord. Wherever you are going. There's a song I want you to sing. That message you always song. Who will sing that song for me? Jesus, you love me. You know the song I'm talking about? Song. I, I want to hear that song. Let's just sing that song and then we'll sit down. Your love is mine. Oh
It's not a motivation, it's the truth. I now understand why David said, What is man? What is man? If you can make a donkey speak, why should man be the one speaking for you? What is man that thou art mindful of? As you begin to see the faithfulness of God in your life, you will get to a point where you will know, I didn't pray for this. This one is not fasting. This one didn't come by study. How it came, I don't understand. And you just say, Lord, let, let, let your name be glorified. Jesus, you be lifted why 
many people do not experience consistent increase is because we get to points in our lives where we become embarrassed to let men know that God is still the doer. When you are starting, it's obvious because you don't have any notable results. It's easy to say it is God. But a time comes when men say you are the doer and you will first say I'm not the doer but later on you will be tempted to say but come to think of it. Is it not my power and the might of my hand? That is the foolishness that can throw a man from any height. It took a king and turned a king into a beast. That whoever can be stupid enough to roll before God, you will never roll before men. I tell you this. That you can lose your dignity before God to say, Lord, I am nothing. Oh, it's not, you are not condemning yourself. It's a recognition. I cast my crown before the highest royalty. I am undone before Help me I cast my crown before The highest, the highest royalty I am undone before I am undone before The majesty The king of kings, king of kings life and God is in control peace to your spirit let every heaviness let every depression give way the peace of the Lord garrisons your heart tonight in the name of Jesus Christ God bless you please be seated please be seated sometimes we just get lost in worship this extended moments of worship are very very powerful because Many things happen in worship. I was preparing to minister 
a program it was a worship program and while I was meditating the Lord gave me a revelation about the woman with the alabaster box and the Lord told me that perfume is not the only thing you can put in an alabaster box whatever you do not want to see you can carry it and put it in that box and take it to him you can put your pain in the box you can put your worries in the box because everything presented in that box never returns to you and so it's not only your crown that you give you can put your pain you can put the worries and break it before him and say lord know what to do with it i have handed this over to you hallelujah it's a powerful thing to really be in the presence of god my prayer for us is that we continue to value his presence that we get to a point where we begin to see the relevance by every standard and from every dimension to see the relevance the profitability of dwelling in his presence hallelujah blessed be the name of the lord it's good to be back home let's get to the word i'm happy to be back it's been a very stressful month already and we bless the name of the lord for the privilege to take his life and his word around the nations let the name of the lord be glorified in jesus name we thank god for the remarkable things to you be all the glory in the name of jesus the lord put what i'm about to teach you in my heart since last month I was just waiting to allow the set time to just discuss it with us everyone's and again the spirit of the lord pastor shago is good to see you again god bless you thank you everyone's and again the lord would come to check our level of spiritual progress you see believers are likened to a house that is being built the Bible says we all as living stones that we are being built into a spiritual house and it is the responsibility of the Holy Spirit to check and meticulously vet the construction to make sure not only that the house is built well but that everything that should be captured inside that house is well represented are we together so god would come every once and again to our lives and find out the areas where the testimony of jesus is not yet established and he will build us up this is why it is powerful to walk with the holy spirit if you really walk with the holy spirit your life will be complete and balanced if you see him building you in a dimension and you see that there is a lopsidedness you just be patient with him very soon he will come and pick up that side and you become an exceptional trophy very balanced very accurate one of the things about dominion i've been looking at this and even in my external ministrations i've been talking about it that we need to understand the dominion systems of the kingdom we need to understand that that's not what i'm talking about but that if the saints remember the bible says that we receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and then it says by them we reign in life it is god's desire that the church enters her glorious destiny experientially and that will only happen when dominion is established are we together now i told you that it is against the law of the spirit for a man to glorify himself so you will lift another who brings you glory you don't glorify yourself in the spirit so it is the son that brings glory to the father and then the church the ecclesia in partnership with the holy spirit glorifies the son but then how is the church now glorified are we together now it is in 
subjecting principalities and powers and the elements of this system bringing them to the obedience of Christ that is how the glory of the church the bride is seen so Jesus glorifies the father the church in partnership with the Holy Spirit glorifies the son then the dominion of the church within this sphere of God's kingdom is how the church is glorified are we together now so it matters to God that the church that we not only continue to learn and grow and fall down and stand up but that we sustain the intelligence and the empowerment two important things the intelligence and the empowerment to rise to a point where experientially the church of the Lord Jesus Christ will not only advance in terms of communicating the gospel of the kingdom but that we get to a point where the dominion of the church is recognized across the sociological strata of human existence and will continue to strive to make this happen in the name of Jesus and I've taught us you know different messages put together that there are systems for dominion please listen carefully there are many indices that you put together to measure dominion the ability to exert sovereign control over a territory and one of it at random in no particular order is influence have taught us the power of influence that kingdom advance does not just happen through evangelism alone but through influence say influence i'm teaching you now say influence influence is very important and believers must be mentored and cultured to see the relevance of kingdom influence influence is the ability to cause men to buy into your values to buy into your ideologies to buy into your perspectives about god and life without using force or cruelty it's called influence are we together now that you get to a point where you can cause a territory to value what you value to prioritize what you prioritize like Ruth told Naomi your God will be my God your people will be my people so you get to a point where you exert a level of pressure on people to bend and subscribe to your values and your ideologies but you do not use force you do not use cruelty you use something called inspiration influence thrives on inspiration the flawlessness of your results compelling people to see the excellency of modeling their lives after the results that they seek which they see in your life the church will never be able to do much if we ignore influence because you see in this world that we live in at every given point someone is influencing you and you are influencing another person are we together now yes if we ever frown at the decadence that we see in our society the decadence did not come by personal indoctrinations it came by using certain people who are called gatekeepers of certain mountains to demonstrate and market that value so strong that an entire territory within a short period of time can buy into that conviction are we together now yes nobody just sits down for instance and loves to be gay I'm just using as an example except that someone who is in a position that can inspire is empowered both by hell and the gatekeepers of this cosmos to market an ideology that would have been ugly if it were marketed by someone with no influence so usually the devil will find people who have um, they are inspiration worthy and then he will incorporate that flaw in their life so that they will sell that idea and we receive everything hook line and sinker because they stand in a position where they can influence our thinking the church needs to be influential remember the dream of King Nebuchadnezzar that Daniel interpreted Daniel said I saw a stone that was not carved by human hands 
he was interpreting the dream of Nebuchadnezzar the head of gold the chest and the breastplate of silver and all of that that were representations of many kingdoms that will come and then the feet that was mixed with clay and iron a type of many systems incorporated in one and Daniel said I saw a stone that was not carved by human hands it arose and crushed that kingdom then the stone became a mountain a stone became a mountain a strata of influence and then he says that a kingdom was given to the saints and that that kingdom cannot be destroyed and that kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and Jesus now comes to say that kingdom is called the church he says I am the builder of it the rejected stone the chief cornerstone now becomes a mountain and becomes a kingdom a collection of people and an invincible force that will crush every kingdom the Bible said it the king had the dream and Daniel interpreted it and it will happen in the name of Jesus Christ so we need influence we need a lot of it one of the other elements that we need to be able to exert dominion I'm just giving us the foundation so when we say we should walk in dominion it's not just a vague talk of authority no there are certain specifics that must be in place if the church is to dominate are we together one of it for instance is spiritual empowerment there cannot be true dominion until that individual is empowered the psalmist said I will lift up my eyes onto the hills and then he asks a question he said from whence cometh my help that means the issue of help is mandatory it's just that people outsource help from different dimensions others can outsource help from sorcery and witchcraft others can outsource help from education and um, our secular enlightenment others can outsource help from relationships and human connections and then the psalmist said for me oh, I can't speak for everybody but my help cometh from the Lord the maker of the heavens and the earth are we together so it's established that nobody rises and commands dominion unassisted you must be assisted by a dimension that is beyond the three-dimensional realm so every time you see someone exerting dominion in any sphere of influence at all there is no need guessing whether that person has been assisted or not if at all you care to guess you will want to just guess the source of the assistance not that that person was assisted it is impossible to walk in dominion unassisted are we together men are helped to be great men are helped to be blessed if you ignore the spiritual assistance that we call empowerment God's token of his presence and might upon your life granting you access to possibilities that should not be affordable to you by human standards that's what it means to be empowered to be engraced with an energy with an ability that only God should have so that you command results that are not given to mere men and then the third is wealth there is no dominion without wealth it is true the wealth of the kingdom is an index that empowers the church to command dominion and when I talk of wealth, I'm not talking of just cars and houses. That's, 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 that's not wealth. That's just maybe a level of comfort. But that, that's not what we're talking about at all. We're talking of a dimension of divine supplies that can force any closed door that is shut by the economy of this world to be opened. Are we together now? These are the forces among others there are many others that must be engaged in our lives and corporately as a body 90 percent listen please 90 percent of the pursuits of men and women on earth today 
is an attempt to make a meaning out of their lives to make a meaning to try to put ends together so a father is rushing to get a job and you ask him sir why are you so busy and he tells you look i need to get um school fees for my children i need to pay rent i need to do this and that and there's a businessman running and i mean helter skelter you wake up in the morning and you see people run from morning till night and you ask them what are you looking for and some say survival some say we're making ends meet and so on and so forth and you know there's there seems to be that contention everywhere left right and center please listen very carefully you see if you follow the way of the Lord please listen to me the Bible says there is a way that seemeth right unto a man it could be a way that has been established by philosophy and the pride of men I hope you know men are arrogant it's what God has had to put up with us for many decades the the pride of men in spite of our ignorance it's amazing how arrogant men are and then at the end we have to turn back and say Lord I need you how many times have people ignored God in the Bible based on whatever they think or they thought was an advantage and they were forced to return to a point where they would call upon his name and acknowledge him so when life defines a pathway for you to follow listen carefully just because a crowd is following that pathway does not mean that way is right are you listening to me now the courage to walk with God is what many people do not have because this system wields a level of pressure on you this is how it is done this is how we make money this is how we become famous this is how we do this and you know that the holy spirit is telling you there is a way i can route your life and destiny such that you will do much in in so short a time and have the time to lift up the name of the lord and glorify him you see let me tell you something the system that was designed by satan was designed by a lot of intelligence the system was so designed that you must lose certain things when you follow it one of the things you must lose is joy one of the things you must lose is peace one of the things you must lose is God one of the things you must lose is everything God gave you so you you move and take that path and check my peace is gone where did it go to and Satan says continue going and then you'd find out my joy is gone and then you find out my relationship with God is gone. The, 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 the progression was designed to strip you of everything divine. And to reward your giving away these valuable things, you get stipends that you call success. You call stipends the accolades of men. While they clap for you for getting A and B, you have lost the things that really matter. And after decades of moving in ignorance, you would turn back and find out you really didn't have anything. You were better off before you started following that path. Are we together now? Our world is full of very angry people. Look at the young people who are angry right now. They turn back and look at their lives. No money, no joy, no peace. You have children as if you should kill them. Are we together now? Because you don't know what to do with them. The needs are much. They bring PTA letter and you are angry. You have a church. You don't even know what to do. It's not growing. You go and copy a formula somewhere and say we must apply it. This church must grow. And you try it and nothing happens. And you give your best and the members lash back at you. And you turn and say, God, did you design this thing? And God said, I have no hand in this. Because Jesus said, I am the way listen carefully that you shall hear a voice from behind saying this is the way walk in it 
now but the challenge is this many believers do not have the fortitude to sit down and be correctly mentored to follow the path that will lead to life and power usually usually a combination i think of operations of darkness tampered with our pride the pride of men we hate being taught we want to show we know we we feel embarrassed when we are educated because it looks like it's an insult on our pedigree are we together now so usually we like suggestions but not to be taught and say look this way you are following is wrong let me tell you this i i say this with all humility i have watched people take steps and i already knew where they were going to end it's painful when you already know where a road is going and someone is still following it I have seen people take steps and make choices that I know the end of it is going to be disaster except the mercy of God intercepts somewhere in the way they are going to fail and they are going to fail woefully now this sounds like pride you see I've been saying this thing for many years I didn't just start saying it this system will never allow you serve God it's a promise I am giving you you follow this system the world's way of doing things you will never live a meaningful life have you seen the rate at which people commit suicide someone would just hang himself and write a letter I hate life I was reading um, the, the online paper just today about a woman I think somewhere in Nigeria who killed her husband killed the children and killed herself that's the way high blood pressure used to be sickness for old people but now you see teenagers having high blood pressure and you wonder what <laughs> excuse me what they are thinking about that's life for you and satan continues to manipulate the system to ensure number one that you never have time for god i hope you know that the number one attack of satan is your spiritual life listen to me carefully in that order when satan begins to launch an attack it doesn't matter where it comes from ultimately because if he can cut your ears away from the voice of god that's the supply of your life man shall not live by bread alone but by every word and if that word is cut away from you you have started dying even though alive every attack on your life has a way of routing to your spiritual life so the bible says we should be steadfast immovable are we together now to get to a point where you are solid that nothing will offend you that you will not find offense in god to say god i'm disappointed in you i will try another strategy i i i trusted you to do a and b in my life you have come to a point where your love for god is as solid as mount zion many people's spiritual lives have been attacked every day every time per second per second satan uses all the elements in this life poverty pain offense disappointment are we together delay all kinds of things and he keeps targeting your spiritual life and goodness is he getting at people rubbishing people so much you see everyone i'm trying to make ends meet um it's time for prayer prayer what please god is here let's 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 do this thing first and we wake up early in the morning and we sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow because that was not the formula assigned to bring us rest there remained a sabbath for the people of god but until you walk with the Holy Spirit who is the Lord of the Sabbath to be able to guide you and show you the systems you must access let me tell you my brothers and my sisters men can find rest in experience do not allow the personal frustrations that you have faced on your journey to fulfillment and relevance make you believe that God is incapacitated no my life and your life can never be a perfect reflection of his capability he doesn't bend to our standards we must subscribe to conform to god's standard 
if you are poor today is not a reflection of god's inability to bless if you are not influential today it's not a reflection of god's limitation are we together if you are not anointed to a notable dimension it's not a reflection of god's inability to reach you there is somewhere in that equation you either do not understand or you are engaging wrongly that's why we are here to learn to be taught to be guided to see that there is a path that truly leads to death not spiritual death physical death but there is a path that leads to life is god speaking to someone already and so i just want to press on an issue with us that i think god would have me talk to us on tonight um so that we can have the time to serve god i title it it's a very brief message my cup runneth over i want to share with you the dominion systems that god has put to help men activate the supplies of heaven i pray pray for me that god will grant me grace to finish on time because i really want us to pray I want us to spend a few minutes praying the greatest distraction i have seen in the lives of believers is this issue of our daily bread the issue of trying to make ends meet and the rate at which believers are being distracted by the worries and the cares especially as regards our needs there has to be a system to address it if not a time will come when on sunday churches will be empty a time will come when you will organize crusades and you will find people saying look i, I have four jobs because i'm trying to make ends meet i my my child school fees has been increased to uh, by times five and i have to make sure ends meet god please wait when i make it i can come to you and if you disturb me i'll come with a seed and sow it to you Psalm 23. Lord, may this message bless your body in the name of Jesus. This is how I read this scripture. If the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Verse 2. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures he leaded me beside the still waters verse 3 he restored my soul he leaded me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake uh-huh yea though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i will fear no evil for thou art with me thy rod thy staff they comfort me five thou preparest a table just leave that verse this is what we are dealing with tonight thou preparest a table not a sword thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies here is the miracle thou anointest my head with oil my cup runneth over may that be our testimony in the name of Jesus Christ the son of the living God that your cup will run over transgenerationally that you will get to a point where because of you it will be that you have brought light you have brought salvation and empowerment to your loved ones i believe that the greatest attack on the body of christ will come in the area of divine supplies supplies for kingdom advance it is no news that God wants us to be able to have the level of overflow and abundance. And this is not in some carnal, um, self-centered way. No, we are talking kingdom here. Are we together? That it is the will of God, please listen very carefully, to bring us to a point by his grace where we access the supplies of heaven that can afford us the opportunity. Listen carefully. To be able to spend our lives by spending our time 
serving the lord remember the teaching that i did here on time certain things about time that we need to learn that all that you have in life is time are we together now that means whatever you give your time to you have invested part of your life to are we together now yes that our lives are time dependent and whatever you commit your time to is what you have given your life to and so satan knowing the value of time has manipulated a system that compels the average person to commit most of his time on mundane pursuits so that we do not have time left to serve the purposes of the kingdom and advance the gospel and lift the name of the lord so it's not the issue of poverty or prosperity or abundance or lack is a fight for time satan is targeting your time not your pocket he's using your pocket to target your time because he knows that if he can create a system around your life where god is not prioritized he has captured you the time of the average believer is spent worrying is spent thinking of needs here and there and i want to tell you categorically it is not the will of god you will never be able to serve the purposes of god that way as a man of god it's impossible to have the time to settle down and prepare a quality sermon well researched with prayer to bless people when there are all kinds of concerns where will we get the fuel for the generator where are we going to rent the keyboard many people lie as if it doesn't matter it does matter when your landlord comes knocking at your door you will be surprised to see how it will influence your prayer life are we together now that says and have you ever been in a situation that gave you concern you lost appetite has that happened to someone that you sat down you are not sick or you are fine but there's a plate of food in front of you and you cannot eat because you are worrying you wake up in the night and you are stressed out are you not seeing that death is killing us give us psalm 112 this is god's idea of a man of a family that is a true representation of his of his abundance and his supplies he says praise ye the lord blessed is the man that feared the lord take note one that man fears the lord number two he delighted greatly in his commands so that's the secret of that man that that man is blessed go back to verse one he is blessed because he fears the lord and he delights greatly in his commands verse 2 says his seed shall be mighty upon earth and then he says the generation of the upright that means that the impact of that man transcends a generation the generation of the upright shall be blessed verse 3 says wealth and riches shall be where please talk to me believers that wealth and riches shall be in his house and in spite of that wealth and riches his righteousness endures now this is what you cannot get with satan if you ever get wealth and riches this way your righteousness will not endure because it will force you to dapple your hands in all kinds of things that by the time you are 10 years in that voyage you have lost so many things wealth and riches shall be in his house and in spite of it his righteousness endures the bible says that man is blessed he fears the lord and he delights greatly in his commands his seed his seed there is not just his children your seed is anything that comes out of you that his seed shall be mighty upon earth and then he says the generation of the upright shall be blessed wealth and riches shall be in his house and then he says his righteousness endures forever i have taught extensively on the systems of the kingdom 
that are allocated to bring supplies and to help believers to come into a point where we experience the abundance that gives us the time and the convenience to serve God. Are we together now? Uh, I've said it again that most of the issue when it has to do with the supplies of the kingdom, wealth, riches, and abundance, is that number one, most people approach it from a carnal and ungodly perspective. It's, it's from a standpoint of loss so the entire exegesis around the subject of wealth is coming from a heart that is already depraved it's not a heart that truly wants to honor God it's just a heart that wants to grab and get and so it's largely a marketing of lust but that's not the way of God number two is that there is as I will always say an imbalance in the communication of the precepts that leads to it so we have preachers who communicate their ideas on what they believe is the kingdom system allocated, the economic system of the kingdom. And they give the best that they can communicate. And then you find out largely that from many of those teachings, the members don't prosper from it. It is usually the preachers that prosper from it because the members appreciate the preachers for teaching them. But they go back and since they themselves don't have congregations to appreciate them, there is nothing for them to return home with. And they are angry and frustrated and then they now begin to write all kinds of devilish things about the gospel and about men and women of God. And then we have on the other side entrepreneurs and business people and all kinds of people who bring all kinds of ideas about wealth and that is wonderful and well-meaning but some of these things are a mix of of Scientology and some of it is even a mix of all kinds of ancient religions and things that reduce God to become energy and just reduces God to become a force just like many other forces so by the time you dwell and explore those things your conclusion about God would just be that God is some kind of sovereign energy in the cosmos who can do something to your brain and so on and so forth so there is largely an imbalance my question tonight is what is truly the way to accessing the supplies of heaven is God so wicked my brothers and my sisters that he will leave us in the dark and watch us move in pain and in the financial squalor that continues to press people down to a point where there is not enough even for our children it says if you have been evil know how to give good gifts to your children if you have been evil in the depravity of your heart yet you can create space for compassion to be able to look at your child and bless your child let me give you a guarantee i promise you in the name of the lord jesus christ if you listen to me you will never never be poor if you listen to me you will never be small it's a guarantee i give you in the name of the lord forgive me if i sound arrogant but it's true just pay attention to this thing don't 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 tamper with the equation when you don't have results get results first then you can say oh you are wrong i discovered another route this teaching is a symbol of god's mercy because there is a tsunami coming it has started it's sweeping everywhere and everything close to it and it's unfortunate that there are many believers that might be victims of this that we will never get to a point where we begin to eat our children do you know women ate their children in the bible to eat your children now doesn't mean to eat your child physically that you can mortgage the future and the destiny of your child so that you satisfy your hunger of today you have eaten your child many of our parents ate our destinies let me tell you the truth they ate our destinies in selfishness there are many people today in marriages they should not be but the parents say you must enter so that we will eat that's eating your child there are many people who should not be involved in certain things at all. There are many pastors who should be in the field serving the Lord. 
they are somewhere roaming around forcing supplies to come from where it's not found I will never serve Satan to feed my stomach. I will never serve Babylon to feed my stomach. It's a vow that you must make that my entire life will be spent serving the purposes of the kingdom. I will never serve the Lord and quote scriptures and fall down under the anointing only to stand up and become a victim of a system that will define for me how much time and space I give God. I'm not going to be talking so much about the spiritual principles we understand I just want to pick one of the subjects that the Lord put in my heart and drum it into us and then we are going to pray hallelujah blessed be the name of the Lord increase in the kingdom increase in the kingdom increase in this kingdom is a product of value write it down increase in the kingdom the greatest gift that can happen to a man is to be shown the systems and the ways that construct your life to become valuable please listen very carefully the law of value your value defines your degree of usefulness please write it down your value defines your degree of usefulness the degree to which you are needed within a civilization within a sociological context the degree of your usefulness not just your uniqueness not just your skill you can have skill that is not useful to the context of a civilization the degree of your usefulness is what we call your value and god so designed that the supplies of heaven are routed listen carefully the supplies of heaven are routed through the medium of value that when God wants a believer and one who is a citizen in the kingdom to rise to a point where you begin to access the riches and the blessings of heaven he does not just favor you as it were with giving you money but he brings you to a pedestal in life where it becomes important possible to ignore you are we together now there are many ways he achieves that but that the gateway into accessing the supplies of heaven experientially is becoming valuable now but most people most of the teachings on value does not capture the full import of what makes it rewardable it's not enough to know that your value is a measure of your usefulness just because you have something that is useful to me does not mean you will be rewarded for it there are many people carrying useful things but are not rewarded for it they are valuable yet they are not rewarded is that true so what is the system that translates your value to compel the environment that you live in to come gentiles coming to your light and then they are kings to the brightness of your rising get this tonight and you will thank me tomorrow i've taught you here that your value decides who pursues you it's true your value decides who pursues you you know you are valuable 
by the extent of demand that is placed on your grace on your skill on whatever it is that you represent now most believers will frown at what i'm saying that's why they are poor that's why they struggle we pray and that's very important we study the word we are faithful in church but we do not understand the systems allocated to bring us out of this qualo of hardship many of the things we try to address are symptoms of one central deficiency value in the area where value plays nothing will cover for it are we together now so your value is a reflection of the extent of your usefulness and i've taught you also that who pursues you determines the magnitude of your reward it is not just because people are pursuing you the quality of people pursuing you is also the quality of the reward that accrues to you if a president needs you you would be rewarded at the level and at the statue of a president is that true yes how can i call on your name and end up in shame no way no way how can i bow down before you and then bow down before a man no way no way because Ever present help in time of need. You are my God. Do you know that when you become valuable, you will command dominion in a way and manner that will not only bring God glory it will bring glory to you it will bring glory to your family you will bring beauty and glory out of your life when you become valuable peg at a level where your usefulness cannot be ignored peg at a level where every other factor to downplay your usefulness becomes inconsequential that you rise to a point where not gender not geographic limitations cultural barriers etc that none of these things sustain the ability to be reason enough for men to ignore you that's value value is not that you have something that is is being biased by loyalty so i have something that only my tribes people patronize and they're only doing that just because they had that my name reflects that now they, oh you are from this state and okay let's come and buy this no when you sustain an ability and you peg yourself at a pedestal in life where regardless of what else is not important in your life people ignore it because of the necessity of what you carry you are valuable it was said about jesus all men seek for you not some not yoruba people seeking for a yoruba man not Igbo people seeking for an Igbo man not northern people seeking for a northern man this is largely what we call value in our world so if i have value now i just quickly go and look for my people and say i'm the son of the soil your boy has come with this if you leave me like that and so we have a crowd of people it is it's largely just ethnocultural but that god put something in your life my brothers and my sisters that will cause all men regardless of value nobody will ever ask you where you come from they don't care whether you are male or female nobody cares whether this water was made by a male hand or a female hand nobody cares whether once you are thirsty to the point of death you say let me have that water whether it was made by a child or an adult the moment people create certain factors to demean you you are not valuable enough if any other excuse is worthy enough to frustrate you then you are not valuable if you listen to what i am telling you your children will bless you tomorrow years ago the holy spirit would tell me pay attention 
and let me make you valuable. I didn't understand the extent of what he was saying. Oh, today I'm grateful. There is no magic that is going to happen in your finances. Let me repeat. There is no magic that is going to happen in your finances. If you do not trust God to take you to a point where you become extremely valuable, I give you a guarantee in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. As far as accessing supplies by yourself here on earth is concerned, you will live a frustrated life. It's a matter of time. And I'm not talking of business here or a job here. <clears throat> Leave all those things first. You see, it is your value that gives life to those things. They don't give life to you. Many have not been taught that part of the ministry of the Holy Spirit in our lives is not just to help us know God. It's not just to help us walk in character. The Holy Ghost upgrades men. He came into our life to build us to a point where we become valuable. The Bible says Jesus increased in wisdom. Listen carefully. Jesus increased in stature. Jesus increased in favor with God and with men. The Holy Ghost does not come into the lives of people and then reduces them to a point where the only thing useful about them is their knowledge of God no sir is God speaking to us tonight value when your world comes to you they watch to see what it is that you have in your hands that you are going to exchange for the reward they have you are valuable when no amount becomes regrettable to commit to you when no amount becomes that means nobody would drop something and turn back and say i was stupid for dropping one million i just came i know pastor alpha is anointed but ah, ah, one million what entered me no when nothing in this world becomes worthy enough to reward what you carry you are valuable with beyond imagination and this is where god is taking us to because let me tell you if you have that even if you are inside a hole i guarantee you you will not beg for bread i hope god is speaking to you you see i love you that's why i'm telling you this the devil will tell you don't mind him then make sure you don't have children make sure that you you, you are not the one who will be taking care of your relatives. Do you know how many well-meaning believers who love God are still asking God questions still today? Lord, this is unfair. My father was a pastor. My mother was a pastor. I'm a preacher. I love you with all my heart. What is all this one that I'm seeing now? 90% of the discussion in homes is money, finance. Madam, what are you bringing? You are hiding money from me. The man says, you, are, you, are, you know, and all kinds of things. And God is watching. He's saying this time is supposed to be prayer time. Have you seen families doing devotion in the morning? And the father stops. Say, what, what devotion are you doing? And he picks a scripture by himself. Just because he wants to quarrel somebody who is not bringing resources. And devotion that is supposed to be a time of love and fellowship ends up becoming quarrel. A lot of people accuse pastors who steal church money. And you see, the truth is that except God shows you the way out, otherwise this thing will press you one day, you will touch what you should not touch. Hello? Please talk to me. Don't trivialize what pressure can do in the life of a man. When you are pressured to a point where you are pushed to the wall, you will be surprised at the compromises you will be able to make. We are losing believers per second per second because of poverty and what it can bring. Did you know someone sent me a text one time and told me that the, whether they wanted to give the person a job God is my witness but that the person who was helping to facilitate it said they have to pay 250,000 naira 
before they will get the job. I said, so do you have the money? He said, no. She was, whether, I think it was a she, coming to just say if I can, if God can use me. I said, no, God doesn't use me for those kind of things. God does not use me for those kinds of things. Now, it's easy to criticize them and say you mean you love God and you are doing that until you find out that a family of 10 people is depending on one person's pocket to eat. It's a cause. It's not the will of God. Imagine, for instance, that I tell them to give me a bucket now. And while I'm preaching, I just, I just say, if the bucket comes close to you, there's something written on the bucket, just read it and do whatever it says. Look at how your mind, everything I'm saying, will just go down because I'm passing a bucket. You look at the bucket and look at what is written on it and just shut down and say, what is all this again? But do you not know that it is capital intensive to lift up the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus is heavy. It takes resources to lift it up. Did you hear what I said? The name of Jesus is not a feather you throw. It's heavy. It will take the shoulder of priests to take it up. It's easy to accuse men of God around. Oh, I like koinonia. They don't ask us to give anything. We just come and enjoy. We enjoy free dinner and they pay money. I like this kind of ministry. Other pastors should be like that. Uh -uh. Don't be quick to criticize my brothers and my sisters. If God does not show you the key to this gate, you will stand there and almost die. <laughs> We raise your banner high We shine your light so bright We sing in honor of you You will never walk in integrity If you don't have supplies I guarantee you in the name of the Lord You will never walk in integrity life will push you to a point where you must compromise you will preach something you didn't preach 10 years ago because you have found out that in that message now can come a way of helping your belly value now but you see the value, listen carefully, my brothers and my sisters. Just being valuable is not enough. You must ensure that that value is needed and useful within the context of your civilization. This is as simple as it is. That your value must be needed. Listen. Listen. pastor come let's assume you are selling this and i don't need it now i'm passing you have this i'm just giving an example yet i don't need it will i reward you are you valuable is your value useful to me no do i need it no so you will still suffer although you are valuable that's what is happening to many of us there is almost nobody here that i know who has not recognized something that is valuable and just because we found it we start rejoicing and we believe life should just come and bless us no sir there is a standard that demands reward because the me who is moving around me too i'm looking for something with my resources and until I find the person with that something to the standard I consider rewardable, that is the only condition for releasing things. It's not enough to be valuable. Your value must first be needed and useful. Second, your value must be translated to a form where it is served with excellence. Excellence that relates to every level of mental development. Did you hear what I just said? That your value must be translated to products and services that are served with excellence. An excellence that can be able to be satisfying to 
any kind of level that means that the value you provide and the excellence attached to it may only be able to serve people who are middle class that level of excellence may not suffice for the great who do not think price are we together now so there are many of us who are doing things but that what we are doing i give you an instance our daddy is a prof here are we together now now if you are a graduate they are not going to call you to go and head an institute of something with all kinds of benefits accruing to it because you are a graduate but not graduate enough you have not graduated enough to sit there so the problem is not that you are not a graduate but you are not graduate The question there is enough to the standard are we together now the person who takes last in a race i hope you know he has a time too that he finished but he did not finish at enough time to get the gold medal the question is not that they finished the question is there is a time allocated and whoever can beat the time is the one who gets the goal so it's not enough to say you are valuable as a man of god let me come back to ministry because many of you as and leave all those things let's talk ministry so let me talk ministry as a man of god it's not enough to be called you can be called you can feel anointed in fact quite honestly you can be anointed but is it to the level that can bless the people who God told to bless you? Because for every destiny helper, there is a standard of grace that compels his resources to answer to you. God can tell me, or God would have put in my spirit to give Pastor Alpha a car, provided he heals my mad child. Are we together? Provided he does what? Not provided he prays in my house. The condition for that reward is that whoever can come with the level of grace that can take away madness in that house. So I'm anointed. I know scriptures. And I come to the house. And I roam around and I just pray. And at the end of it, they just thank me. They put malt in a bottle with straw. And they put donut. And they escort me with it outside. And I go it's not that god did not send them your level of value did not make it fair for that answer to come to you that means when i sit in a meeting and grace is coming on me god is lifting me to the standard that can match the helpers so that their resources can now come to me are you getting what i'm saying now listen very carefully everybody who will bless you tomorrow is already alive today your level of grace has not risen enough to call them that's why they are shifted to your tomorrow if you enter that level of grace today they will come today i look at my life today and i see what people do to me and i'm almost tempted to ask where were you where were you when i was sucking ginger inside a straw and i was a believer Are we together? When I was trekking to First Bank without money in my account by faith, hoping that I would get miracle alert. Now you are receiving it free. It's just coming. There was a price. God has authorized Pastor Alpha. This is your prayer request for the next level. But your value is here. It cannot match. Until you are lifted to the level that matches it. And so the Holy Spirit has the responsibility of upgrading the saints. Please listen carefully. Upgrading the saints to a level where their usefulness becomes worthy of being rewarded by any standard are we together now that means pastor alpha gets to a point where someone will sit down and think with his wife and the lord will say kai build one of my servants a house why don't they think about you 
because they don't think it's fair to give you that kind of house now remember they know you are called but they think it's unfair they believe that there are more rewarding ministers in terms of impact kingdom impact and the spirit of god by himself will take their minds to those people and say that's the man you should bless please believe what i'm telling you yes we've had people my brothers and my sisters i, I say this to the glory of god we've had people live and travel from other nations and other cities to koinonia not for the program travel with seeds and they said they sat down and agreed either as a business enterprise and say no since we love god and before we started this business we agreed that god should grant us grace so that we'll bless others and they leave their cities take flights go through the rigor of coming to zaria and all they are coming to do is apostle we want to sow into koinonia and we want to continue and you ask them why and the man will say i listen to one message say value not message say value but that value had grace and content in it to rise to a level where it can smash the devil worrying that man so the man listened to a message and as he listened to the message he fell asleep and in that sleep the message continued and jesus stepped in the jesus he fasted for two months to see he didn't see but he listened to one message and climbed the ladder of a grace straight into an encounter he would look for that person and reward him that was why nicodemus looked for jesus even in the night he traced him the bible doesn't tell us everything that happened there but i'm convinced he came with honorarium it's just my thinking it's just my simple thinking forgive me if i sound arrogant but there are some of you as you are seated right now there are all kinds of envelopes in your pocket you are waiting for us to share the grace so you will queue and spend time only to come and sow into my life now i'm sorry that i'm the one saying this and i'm not by any way manipulating you but it's the truth now you are thinking how will somebody stand for hours just to drop a seat to a man whereas you beg the same person while he was on the queue and he didn't give you transport fare are you seeing how it is there is no reward until your value rises to a point where it can be served with excellence as a man of god nobody will place a demand on your grace just because you are prayerful and just because you study the truths that you communicate must the impact of that word must be felt in the lives of the people when it is done clear the way for the rewards that will come now you don't preach because of money don't get me wrong however it is important possible my brothers and my sisters to be valuable to serve that value with excellence whether you sell it or give it free you must be rewarded it's a law by the grace of god and the privilege of god's hand god has granted me the opportunity to raise too many people around this nation and around the world for me to beg for bread my children will never beg for bread even if i give back to them and go to be with the lord because people have been raised and wisdom is justified by her children your value has not raised anyone yet you want life to reward you you see how unfair it is just because you think you are a graduate holding a certificate does not mean that what have you given to the world that you demand value from it's amazing how your relatives will not give you money but they will run for a meeting and kneel down waiting for a man of god to pass so they will drop money you beg them for rent they didn't give you yet they are carrying four times that amount to give someone who is already blessed nobody really blesses a needy person they bless valuable people you must translate yourself from this needy mentality to a mentality of value that even if you don't have money in your pocket you can say in the name of jesus i'm coming for koinonia there is an anointing that is coming i'm not falling for nothing every time i fall i rise upgraded in the spirit and a day will come i will put something in the realm of the spirit that will cause the nations to place a demand on my grace 
Jesus climbed up the mountain and people followed him up the mountain to the point that his influence threatened the scribes and the Pharisees they said no this guy is stealing the show if we don't do something about him he will destroy us koinonia let me tell you my brothers and my sisters you are gathered here every week by the grace of God because we continue to strive to communicate truths to you that are applicable to every facet of your life it's a formula that is unbendable you would hear testimonies here you would hear testimonies every week that the word produced results nobody leaves what works did you hear what I'm saying nobody leaves what works no sir the world does not have too many things that are working so the options are few there are not too many things working in this life so when you find what works you stay and pay whatever price it takes to stay that's why the presence of God is 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 a is a place and a zone you must desire and hunger for forever because you see the presence of god does not just make you heaven bound it makes you valuable it truly does look at my life the presence of god that's where you find the anointing so while i'm worshiping in his presence i love i love i love your presence I love, I love. You think I'm just wasting time singing. But while I'm singing and worshiping in his presence, there is an elevation in the spirit. A new anointing. Son, you have this anointing and that, but you don't have this one. Let me introduce this in your life. And I'm there just worshiping. The same way you are typing the letter in your office. Me too, I'm, 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 I'm doing all of that. The same way you are reading for a promotion exam and all of a sudden i step out and i see a grace that was not upon me yesterday now the grace has come meaning the person who will not bless me yesterday can now bless me because there is a grace that can now add him to the list of the blessings i love i love i love your presence i love i love I love your presence. I love, I love. I love you, Jesus. I love, I love. Shalabakato Saladash. I love your presence. I love, I love. Listen. Forget about bringing a valuable person down. You don't know how needy this world is until they find true value. <clears throat> All this issue of trying to bring people down is a joke. When you find especially value that is stamped with the hand of God, only God can bring that person down. I'm telling you this. Koinonia will continue to grow from glory to glory it's not just some recitation the formula has been given the scroll is not closed the seals have been broken it's been opened we have seen it with our eyes the things men do not have how could they resist it an anointing is not sold in the market an anointing is not stored in a bank the government does not have it so how dare you trivialize the power of God upon the hand of upon the life of a man and then assume it's not there your need will force you to remember that only the anointing can solve it listen you are seated now in this place to some of you you are attending a service I wish you could see in the realm of the spirit that you are climbing ladders some of you traveled from far you just thought you came for a service until you go back on Sunday on your little prayer group and you say let us pray fire and you see fire everywhere to an extent that you say what is this what is going on here and everybody descends they will stop calling you brother immediately they, they will have to invent a name to show you you have risen in the spirit
let me tell you this it's good to know how to cook it's good to know how to do business but my brothers and my sisters be anointed this is real value be anointed have something upon you that no man can buy the same way you can do nothing against the truth but for the truth he said thou anointest my head give us that scripture you did not anoint my cup the goal is for my cup to run over but the oil came on my head and the result showed in my cup it takes more than a good profession to prosper it takes more than a good skill to prosper there is only so much reward you can get from that angle ah but when his hand comes upon you blessed is the man that my god finds and puts grace upon you your life will be a wonder you will you will walk upon gold as dust i'm telling you this listen let me tell you all these money money things you see people chase around most people don't have any money they just have enough to solve their basic needs so they look rich they are poor and yet that's what distracts a lot of people but when you stand say lord put something in my life put something upon me i i, I don't know why people don't pray that prayer oh. God shorten my journey I don't have time shorten my journey let there be an anointing on my profession listen 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 come Emeka you are a doctor come watch this we are going to pray this gentleman is a doctor when someone is sick they will meet you for injection or meet you for whatever now your profession does not determine who you bless the anointing on your profession will make a rich man come as your patient you see now that one is not mbbs again that one is the anointing influencing your possibilities so a day that no doctor is around the billionaire comes and the holy ghost not your profession pushes you there you have a restaurant you are a chef congratulations but not being anointed you will continue to cook for poor people for wherever they will finish eating and then back in and say i don't have 10 naira i don't have 15 naira but when the anointing comes upon it the anointing will make you go to visit your auntie just when a politician is there and he says i'm looking for someone there is a meeting and he says ah my daughter is here that one is no longer your skill that one is a grace from heaven that comes upon men listen you can be a preacher and have a good understanding of scripture mighty exegesis of scripture and they keep inviting you to different places wonderful you will be blessed but the eye of your helpers will never meet you until there is a grace that grace is what will take your seed your message whatever you represent to the ears of the man that can announce your ministry how would i have risen from zaria here how many public address structures do you have i'm not on facebook i'm not on any social media as a person it's not everything that is just good preaching it's not everything that is just mm -mm. there is an anointing that announces it's called an oil of gladness it can take men and make you above your fellows please listen the financial tsunami that is coming to destroy men a time will come where you will see people i'm not i'm not i'm not a, a sadist but a time will come where everything you have every other person has it you are educated they are educated and then the other person contending with you is a tribesman of the director what then is your advantage there are things when you have only the rich look for you there are things when you have only the poor look for you there are things when you have only sick people look for you 
there are things you have only those in need of legal issues look for you there are things when you have only hungry people look for you but there are things when you have all men will seek for you all men all men God designed it that way so when Jesus was about to start his ministry having done everything he did the Bible says he went to the wilderness and cried there 40 days 40 nights fasting and he returned in the power of the Spirit and then Acts chapter 10 tells us how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power the Bible says he went about doing good healing all day that were oppressed something humorous happened today I I have never been to Shiloh as a person and I was just sitting today and all of a sudden I got a text the pastor in charge of registering pastors in Shiloh sent a text to my phone and said man of God are you coming we want to arrange your reservations and this I said what is this now listen I'm just saying it to encourage you I don't know that man from Adam are we together now yet there is somebody who will not stay in the secret place but will keep lobbying you will go there and be roaming around the gate like a thief they will say please join the members or sit in the overflow listen once you are struggling to be accepted in a realm and they are rejecting you it's a sign that the anointing has not opened the door go back don't force yourself just go back when you try to enter as a pastor you see other pastors and you are fighting for acceptance and they are saying mr man we invited a b not you will consider you one day stop making a mockery of yourself go back to the secret place and say where is the god that puts oil on the head of men let me tell you my brothers and my sisters when what comes upon great men comes upon you there is no door that will remain closed thou anointest my head with oil is someone ready to pray tonight this is the value that i brought for you that if you if god grants you access to the anointing and you can serve that anointing with excellence there is no door listen you don't have to leave your profession it just needs to be anointed many of us are educated but our certificates are not anointed many of us are skilled but your skill needs to be anointed i like you to find a corner our time is gone for the next five or ten minutes worship team just set the atmosphere for us find a place and blast in tongues and pray in the spirit and cry to god and say lord you are the giver of all good things you don't withhold good things Lord, put something upon my life. Place an anointing upon my head that will answer to the needs of kings, that will answer to the needs of nobles. Place an anointing upon my degree. Place an anointing upon my masters. Place an anointing upon my PhD, oh God. Place an anointing upon my profession. I am a lawyer, but only an educated one. Can you put an anointing upon my legal practice? Your usefulness. Amplified by the presence of the anointing. Worshippers pray, Lord, I can sing. I have written songs, but let an anointing come upon my song, so called. Lord, I'm a businessman. It is true that I've paid my price. Doing well, learning the principles of business. But let an anointing come upon the value that I provide. Outside, make sure you're praying. Overflow, make sure you're praying. Now anoint my head with oil. Shabakatukata. My business 
overflows. My ministry overflows. My church overflows. Thou anointed my head with oil. Favor overflows. Thou anointest my head with oil. My career explodes. Thou anointest my head with oil. Koinonia, pray. You are opening the gates of greatness. Pray. Lord, let your anointing announce me. Let your anointing announce the gift of God upon my life. Shaka takata. Come on, prayer warriors, pray. Shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it. Pray like a priest. Embra koto shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it. Embra keto kasala makata. Shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it. Pray. Hallelujah. I like you to mention whatever it is that you do, whether it's your job, whether it's your business, and say, Lord, let your anointing and your fire come upon it, and let there be an explosion from the left to the right. Lift your voice and pray. If you are in ministry, pray over the work God has put in your hand. Lord, it's time to take the power, the glory of God to the nations. It's time for the gates of ministry to be opened for the sake of the gospel. As a businessman, it's time to rob minds with the great. Lift me by your anointing, O oh God. Your certificate can give you a job. It will take the anointing to rise. I want you to pray a serious prayer lord by the anointing on my life take away poverty and hardship lift your voice and pray if there is an anointing on my life then there is a demand for it let the anointing of my life roll away financial reproach let the anointing upon my life activate divine supply by the ministry of destiny help us that it will be a privilege for them to arise and answer to the cause of my need. Pray God will answer, I tell you. Hallelujah. Look at me. Look at me. We are praying. There is an anointing that works like perfume. Isaac used it and said, My son is like a field. I place something upon my son that makes him to begin to smell like a field that the Lord has blessed. That means you pass and that aura attracts you have you seen people you just like and honestly there is nothing there is no reason you just look at them and you go out of your way to ask questions what are you doing in zaria i just came do you have a place to stay and you too you are wondering the smell 
when the woman broke the alabaster box the bible says the perfume filled the room there is there is this plant they call queen of the night that's the name i think is that true and once it's night when other plants are sleeping that plant just takes over the entire atmosphere the anointing is smellable you can be within a vicinity and the spirit of someone begins to know ah, this man is here let me go and see this pastor I say i knew it i knew you were there hold on wait for me and the person will go and bring something i like you to pray the fragrance of your glory lord let it smell my life that as i walk my life becomes a walking miracle to pray two more prayer points i like you to cry and say lord i am the one who will break the circle of hardship in my entire lineage there are many of us here listen listen let me tell you the truth you will be a wicked person if you don't think of your children the power of god is here i sense a strong anointing i like you to pray that the grace upon your life will crush hardship once and for all over your family lift your voice and pray says John was anointed from the womb listen until that time they never named anybody John so they wanted to give him a name an identity like what was the status quo but when the angel came you see that Zechariah wanted to corrupt the destiny of someone who was going to be the greatest of all prophets according to the mouth of the Lord and the, the father's mouth was shut so that the destiny be preserved listen when you do uncommon things uncommon men come to you when you do common things common men come to you you are going to pray lord anoint me for unusual things 
unusual dimensions unusual ministry unusual business unusual medical practice it has to be unusual no table they said that a notable miracle had happened lift your voice lord an unusual prophet an unusual apostle an unusual evangelist an unusual caterer an unusual chef come on pray an unusual IT consultant an unusual doctor an unusual professor dimensions of the workings of the spirit unusual dimensions unusual dimensions hallelujah listen let me tell you this I shared with you years ago that a man of God was praying for me and that man said something that disturbed me I went to sow a seed to him and he said oh Lord create a problem that only him can solve I, I, I thought that was selfish when you talk of kingdom kingdom is not a thing of competition and the rest but he said he may have prayed his prayer whether I believe it or not it was later as I began to grow that I understood that ah, he was not being selfish. He was just saying, Lord, distinguish him. Put him in a level. Let me tell you, Rehoboth means God has given me my space. There is your space in life. That you dig a well, they can come and close it. But there is a space in ministry. There is a space in business. You are going to pray one prayer. Lord, allocate my space and keep me there. A space that is beyond competition. Beyond contention. There are names that when you call on earth, there is no basis for comparing them. There are names when you call in ministry, in business, in family life. They are outstanding. They are in a class of their own. Your father God is in a class of his own. Cannot be compared with any other God. Listen. I met I just returned from a trip and I met a particular music minister and he came to me and hugged me I said oh I've been blessed by your songs I'm happy to see you now and he looked at me he said apostle this is not the first time you're meeting me I said really he said in 2012 I was in a meeting I was nobody you called me out and prophesied to me and I said I did he said yes that you prophesied to me that the wells of worship the fountain will begin to rise and that from that time his life had moved forward and while we were in the meeting, the Lord spoke to him, to him again and I told him, I said, you are going to write just one song, one that will surpass what your songs have done again. It doesn't take too many things to lift you. Just one noise by the hand of God. There was one earthquake. Bam! What did Ben Carson do to be great? just one surgery and that was it when you call all the music ministers in this nation it's usually one song many songs they wrote but one song bishop td jakes wrote one book woman thou art loose till today no other book has brought him that kind of reward dr Thomas munro had written so many books bestsellers but when he wrote rediscovering the kingdom 
that one book was a game changer please can we borrow one more minute and say lord what is the one thing that will announce me by your grace let it come let it come let it come lift your voice and pray lord what is the one song lord as a man of god what is the one meeting the one meeting that will announce my grace as a doctor who is the one patient that i will treat and get out of poverty forever one thing is needful one thing one thing pray koinonia there is a god that answers one encounter when he had with jesus changed his life one encounter with catherine kuhlman changed his life one encounter we are still praying lord what is the one thing the one dimension who do i need to prophesy to for my life to change whose body must be healed through my hands what is the one meeting that will announce your grace upon my life what is that one publication that the nations will hear hallelujah praise the lord i think it was last year last year or early this year i had the privilege of flying with professor wale soinka and when i got into the aircraft he was sitting on my seat and i looked at him i was standing face to face with a nobel laureate very simple looking and I thought about this thing again. It's not many things that lift people. They wanted to walk him so that I said, no, 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 you can't do that. This is a great man. I use it as an opportunity to practice the law of honor. Say, please keep him there. Just find whatever seat for me and let me sit. Why will I walk him up? Whereas I aspire that the world hear God's voice through me too. One thing. Have you not seen that great men are only lifted by one thing? If David didn't kill Goliath, he will continue to eat sheep meat till he dies there in the wilderness. The head of Goliath brought him a wife. The head of Goliath made him and his family tax-free. The head of Goliath made him a king. One thing. One thing Jesus did, die on the cross. And he resurrected and was enthroned as king. Listen. I know our time is gone. But you are going to cry this one thing. Listen. For some of you, it may not be one thing. It may be one encounter with one person. We have a number of our worshippers here. This young man, Gashina, where is he? He's praying. This gentleman. It was one of his songs, just one of his songs that Nathaniel Bassi received. One of his songs. And this song just exploded this gentleman's ministry. Hallelujah. Sometimes you just need one encounter. I'm saying this to you. I've shared with you my experience with Jesus. It's not that I was not doing, I was not doing bad. I was already working in a measure of signs and wonders and this but one solid encounter not this nonsense around that people say encounter with no proofs solid encounter where you meet the power of god apostle babalola was roaming around in a forest when fire fell on his head from that forest one encounter and changed his life archbishop benson idahosa it was one encounter that turned his life and announced him Bishop Oyedeko, one encounter, an 18 hour vision changed his life. Papa Iya Deboye, one encounter turned his life around. You don't need 10. Lord, what is the encounter? What is the idea? What is the song? Release it, cry and say, Release it. Call on to me and I will answer. One encounter with the healing anointing will take you beyond the shores of this nation. One encounter with the prophet.
prophetic grace will open you up to dimension one conference that God will grant you access to rise to will lift you and take you high And comes to you and says I'm about to die I don't know whether I'm alive or not but the last time they told me I was dying help me at that point that's not the time to start teaching him and say okay be patient this is you can teach him financial principles but he needs that raven that fed Elijah to come to him quick let the raven feed him first when someone tells you my life it's not moving forward all doors are closed and because of that my father is about to leave my mother they have concluded that the divorce will happen in the month of may that's not the time to settle down and start saying oh this and that line upon line precept they are, they are, a, a family is about to be torn apart oh how we need the power of god in this generation we need the power of god more than falling down we need the power of God more than the jargons and the stories that we talk. Let me tell you, in the final analysis, it is his divine power that is the giver. And if that power is not resident within you to the degree that it takes to provide supernatural solutions, then you will continue to see people frustrated. If you're a man of God and you came here, listen to me. You are not a blessing when you are not anointed. Let me repeat myself. You are not a blessing when you are not anointed. You may be a good person. You may be a sincere person. It takes more than sincerity to be a blessing. The Messianic prophecy, Isaiah chapter 61. Please give it to us. Isaiah chapter 61. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me and then it says because the lord hath anointed me the lord had done what please talk to me koinonia the lord had anointed me so the factor there is the anointing and then it begins to list all the possibilities that can now happen on account of the anointing it takes the anointing to preach glad tidings to the meek it takes the anointing to bind up the brokenhearted. It takes the anointing to proclaim liberty. It doesn't take a mouth to proclaim liberty. It takes the anointing. You can have the mouth and say be free. But it takes the anointing to proclaim liberty to the captives. It takes the anointing to open up prison doors. Next verse. It takes the anointing to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And then the year of vengeance of our God. Look up please. It takes the anointing to comfort all those who mourn. Verse 3. To appoint to them that mourn in Zion. So even in Zion there are those who mourn. It didn't say to appoint to them that mourn outside Zion. They are in Zion, yet they are mourning. To give them beauty. Look at what the anointing can do. Hi. The anointing, please listen, listen, families, listen. The anointing can give a man beauty. Beauty, beauty for ashes. Many families know what ashes looks like. When a family has 10 people and no one is employed, when a family has 10 people and the highest earner in that family earns 2,000 per month, ashes. But the Bible says by the anointing you can give men beauty. Beauty. You came for koinonia with ashes and God says keep your ashes here. Take beauty. 
as you are sharing the grace, you are walking out with it. And then you continue to see your life. You know you have carried beauty by the results that follow. It says, until the spirit be poured upon us from on high. Then it says, the wilderness shall be counted for a fruitful vine. And then the fruitful vine counted for a forest. Beauty for ashes. The oil of joy for mourning. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. And then it says that they might be called the trees or oaks of righteousness. The planting of the Lord that he might be glorified. God is still beautifying the lives of people. My brothers and my sisters, don't get used to your situation. I know you've trusted God in spite of it. But God wants you to now continue trusting him without it. It's, it's honorable and it is noble to trust God in spite of it. But what if he takes the pain away? What if he takes the situation away? What if he takes the predicament away? It takes a wicked man of God to watch what is going on in this country. And to watch what is going on in the times that we live in. And act as if nothing is happening to people. There are real problems. Poverty is a real problem. Young people now have high blood pressure because after spending 10 years for a four-year course and graduating with a 2-1, you are roaming around the streets like an arm robber with your certificate that seems to have no value. Look at the, you know, we, we've, we've been talking about, I don't know if it's happening only in Zaria, but we've been talking about the increased rate of suicide, especially among young people. When you sit down and try everything and it does not work, you just tell yourself, I'm better off dead. And you at least, my money cannot rent a house, but it can buy a rope. What can it buy? A rope. And the spirit of death will help you to buy a rope. And you find a tree and hang yourself. And you who should have been a blessing to a family has now died. And then people come to church with that kind of pain. And a man of God says, don't worry. It's not all about your needs. It's about Jesus. I agree. It's about Jesus. But man was not designed to bend that law indefinitely. There has to be an opportunity given. When the spirit of the Lord will step into the lives of people. I will never, never watch people go through things that the power of god can change and act as if nothing can be done about it no sir whoever told you that the power of god cannot do anything about the demons that oppress families whoever told you that the yokes of darkness can remain unhindered i know you have prayed i know you have fasted but i've told you why it did not happen it takes a level of grace Whoever told you favor has stopped working. Don't generalize pain. There are men who have found Goshen, a place of safety. There are men who have found Bethel. There are men whose lives are like Beulah and Hephzibah. The planting of the Lord. When God plants a garden, will it not grow? He says the planting of the Lord that he might be glorified. This is the place of encounter. I want you to know that this is a place where God increases your convictions. This is the place of surrender. Do to me what you want. This is the place where your life will change do to me what you want listen when the lord turn again the captivity of your family when the lord turn again the captivity of your destiny it says we were like them that dream how beautiful is it to see the other side of pain 
How beautiful is it to see the other side of a man's trusting God? How beautiful it is to see a man trusting God for grace. Lord, I know you still anoint men, but where is the anointing? When you see the other side of that man, how beautiful it is to see a wilderness turn into a fruitful vine and turn into a forest. I believe in miracles. I believe in the hand of God. I believe the supernatural can invade the world of men and correct and adjust things. I believe in 24 hours God can change a man's life. Listen, I believe in the law of process, but I believe in speed too. I believe God still lifts men. I believe God still uses men to make statements in a territory. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? And God says, come, let me use you. Let me show men that I am still God, the lifter of men. I believe this. I believe that God is a healer. I believe he's a deliverer. I believe when men lose things, they can get it back. Yes, sir. Including time. Including time. I believe that when men lose things, they can get it back. I believe God can anoint ordinary men. Men who are just available. But the level of grace is not there. But I know there is a place a man can come to where you encounter the power of God. Everywhere is not the same. No. God is everywhere, but he does not manifest his power everywhere. I believe in the power of God. I was sent not only to reveal his face, but to reveal his power. To let men know that he's still alive. To correct misunderstandings about God. Please listen to me. I want to charge your faith before we pray. I believe that challenges can end. I believe that problems can end. Did you hear what I said? I believe a man can sit down and search left and right and only see the goodness of God. I believe it. I believe it. I believe prosperity is real. I don't believe prosperity destroys a Christian. I believe in the blessing of the Lord. I believe in what it can do to your family. I believe in what it can do to your children. I believe in what it can do to your health. I know poverty causes sickness. I know it causes worry. Nobody will preach into embracing nonsense. No. I believe a man can prosper even as his soul prospers. I believe in speed. I believe God can compress what should happen in five years in one month. I truly believe it. I truly believe it. I believe God can restore time. When a woman has been barren for seven years, if she gives birth to one baby, we thank God, but it's not a statement enough. When she gives birth to triplets, God took nine years of space in three, three years and compressed it in one year. Now, that's victory over time. The hardiness of the hearts of men will require some dimensions of results to break their pride to honor God. Please listen, let me tell you. We are not going to use stories and noise to get people to Jesus. Wealth is a weapon. The anointing is a weapon. Favor is a weapon. Mercy is a weapon. Wisdom is a weapon. What are you fighting with? Desire, you will not win. It takes you being equipped with the spiritual arsenals that have been made for the victory of the saints in light. The planting of the Lord that he might be glorified. I believe a man can weary the devil 
to a point where he will let you go. I believe you can live in a territory and create your own climate financially, spiritually. I believe it. Listen, out of everything I'm saying, throw away the ones you don't believe and open your heart to the ones you believe. I believe a believer can serve God better in an atmosphere of comfort. When your children's school fees are paid, you will serve God better. Don't let religion come with the pride of men and pretend that it does not matter. Yes, I know that none of these things should affect our love for God. But let me tell you the truth. There is a level of pain you continue to have that can harden your heart towards God. It takes time to know God. It takes time to serve God. And that's the time the devil does not want to give you. You will never have time to serve God when you are moving around chasing money. You will never have time to serve God when you are moving around lobbying a way to, li to be lifted. Vain is the help of man. People of God, please hear me. God did not gather us tonight to waste our time. He gathered us tonight to make real the things in our lives that pertain unto life and godliness. Can I tell you this? Whether you believe in what I said or not, it does not change the truth. The truth was buried. It took only three days. It came out. So whether you believe in the truthfulness of what is said or not, you embrace poverty and see what it does to your life and your family. Embrace mediocrity and see what it does. Embrace sickness and see how much you will spend per week. Your entire resources, when you are finally broke, then the person will die. Is that sickness? Why will it ten, take 10 years to build one house? Is that a testimony? A prostitute will sleep with a man overnight and wake up by the next day with estates and houses and everything. Let's be careful the things we say about God because many of them are not true. Please hear me, especially for our precious visitors. Don't magnify your challenges and come hoping God will change your life. We are talking God here. Not a doctor. Not a consultant. Not an architect. Not a monarch. The God of the universe. You may not be sick in your body, but who told you he cannot change your life? Do you not know he's called the father of spirits? That God can speak to a man while you are here and compel him to bless you. That God can give you a dimension of grace that you didn't enter this building with. And you turn back. And on Sunday you climb your pulpit as usual. And suddenly fire. A new dimension of grace. Do you believe in what I'm sharing? If you being evil know how to give good gifts. Let me tell you, you can hold on to the hands of God and say it was never about your hands. It was about your heart. But tonight, I need your hands too. In addition to your heart, step in over my life. Step in. Please don't give up on God. Wake up. Don't give up on God. Don't come here hoping. I've waited, waited. The God of heaven can compress time. If you don't believe all this, there's no point being here tonight. Because we are going to pray. And you must insist that tonight is not the night when I will clap for anybody. I came to mean business with my destiny. Listen, when we begin to pray, I'd like you to insist that anything that does not bring glory to God in your life must leave this night. No matter what it is. Some of you may need to rewrite your prayer request again. Because of your pain, you've stopped writing some things. 
you just concluded that God, this one, just, just leave this issue. No. When it was time to resurrect Lazarus, he said, roll away the stone. Roll away the stone. Proof that you believe in resurrection by rolling away the stone. Two things men did. They rolled away the stone and they lose the man. What if they lose Lazarus and they found out he was not alive or he just fell and collapsed? Your destiny must open up tonight. It's not a blessing for people to doubt. The Bible says to be diligent in these things, to prove your calling and election, to make it sure. There are things that must be in your life to validate your call and your election. If you're a man of God here, yeah, trust God for grace, for God's sake. Just go and stand before people and just open a scripture and speak and close it and say, let's pray. No. That's what the scribes did all the time. But Jesus came and opened and read the messianic prophecy. And he said, today, this scripture is fulfilled in your eyes. They thought they would share the grace. He closed it and he told the guy with the withered hand. He said, stretch your hands. These things I write to you, O excellent Theophilus, of all that Jesus began to do and teach. Not teach alone. Do and teach. Can we pray? Please find a serious neighbor. And I'd like you to pray from the depth of your heart. The gift is only given to them that ask. God cannot assume you desire it. Please lift your voice in one minute and cry to the God of heaven. Outside, pray. Those following online, pray. Lord, visit me. Lord, visit me. Appear to me by your word as it were in Shiloh. Pray over your ministry. Pray over your business. Pray over your career. Pray over your destiny. Lord, I came that the gates be open tonight. Pray. Pray. That devil must leave my destiny today. That wilderness must be turned to a fruitful vine. That wilderness must be turned to a fruitful vine. Pray, pray, don't look around. That wilderness must be turned to a fruitful vine. Place something upon my life, oh God. Place something upon my destiny, upon my business upon my church Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One more prayer point, and the Lord will set this place on fire. Genesis chapter 21. Genesis chapter 21. Genesis chapter 21. Read with me, please, if you are a believer. One, two, read. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said. 
And the Lord did unto Sarah as he has spoken. Lord, do to me as you have spoken. You said many things about my life. Do it. I've heard you, but I need to see it. I've heard you, but I need to see it. Do to me as you have spoken. You said I am the head and not the tail. Do to me. You said with favor shall you encompass me as a shield. Do to me. You said you will restore the years the canker worm has eaten. Do to me, O oh God. Pray, do to me, O oh God. Visit my family. You said you will wipe away every tears. You called 2019 my year of extraordinary fruitfulness. Do to me as you have spoken. do to me oh God you said I will have my child in 2019 do to me as you have spoken look up I want you to receive every grace that the Lord is going to be releasing in this place because you see let me tell you every grace supplied to you is the strength to survive the squallow of any season and if you do not obtain the requisite level of grace for any season you will find out that your life will remain barren and unfruitful. Truly, I came, I came with all my heart tonight. I, I don't want it to be a miracle service that we just play around casually. Please believe for something to come upon your life. Believe for a grace to come on your life. See, this thing about anointing, if it's not there, it's not there, period. Very simple. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I want to pray 
I'll stand tonight praying on the grace for speed. Hold on, hold on. Please listen. There is a reason why I continue to say this. Many destinies are too slow to glorify God. Are we together now? When the devil cannot keep you at a standstill, then your progress will be so slow. It, it said, I must walk the works of him while it is day. That means I need to gain time. It says, for the night cometh when no man will walk again. Let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, there is a real grace for speed. If you have not seen it, it's because it's not on your life. There is a real grace for speed that vetoes the sentiments of men. So I want to pray. I want to start from there. And then we just allow the Lord to take us. Be conscious of what comes upon you. Be conscious of what comes upon you. That's how God answers prayers. He answers prayers by putting something on your life that will compel creation to begin to act in a way and a manner that will change your life. Are we together? Please lift your hands and let me pray. I believe in the grace for speed. I have seen a measure of that grace and I know it is true that God can shift a man. I'm going to pray and release this grace and inside and outside that anointing and the anointing works. Let me just tell you the anointing works. You will see people begin to run. It's, it's not anything superstitious. It is just the character and the operation of that anointing. We need it. The Lord put it in my heart. We need it for our businesses, ministries, and so on and so forth. Father, in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare. Right now, inside and outside, I stand by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And I declare right now, at the count of three, let this grace for speed, that you have provided even for this season let it rest on people now i release that grace take that grace now please bring them out take that grace now inside outside everywhere i activate the operation of this grace i shift your life in the name of jesus to strength dimensions in the spirit receive the grace for speed receive the grace for kabakatalika parousia receive that grace for speed in the name of Jesus and the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah and he ran on barefoot and overtook the chariots of Ahab to Israel I command speed 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 bring them out speed help that woman please my God I'm still praying in the name of Jesus it says ye have encompassed this mountain for too long turn ye not what I prophesy again like 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 fire from heaven let that grace for speed mantle a family now not just an individual let it come upon families families receive speed i shift you i shift you in the spirit new level speed speed bring them out speed you will never be the same never be the same i'm not praying for individuals now i'm praying for families any family stagnated here i stand by the power of the holy ghost and i prophesy speed inside and outside i release speed right now
Now the Lord is that spirit, he says. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. The Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing chains on people's legs. Chains. And the Lord is saying, the Lord is bringing deliverance now. I'm seeing chains. If you are under this category as I'm praying now, the fire of God, I'm seeing fire moving, but not on people's heads, on people's feet. I decree and declare, is it not written that where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty? At the count of three, anyone whose destiny has been pegged by these chains, I declare be free now. Be free now. Let the power of God come upon you. Be free now by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Be free now. I want to pray. God, I'm telling you, I'm seeing, this is, I'm still seeing it. Chains. You see, let me tell you this. Look up. Look up. The Bible tells us that there are many things that should happen where the spirit of the Lord is. One of it is liberty. Do you know what liberty is? It's a separation between you and the obstacle that mocks God in your life. There is such a thing in the dealings of God with men. As giving men liberty. I want to pray. There will be a mighty deliverance right now. Many of you, this is what has plagued your life. If it is true that victory was wrought on the cross, then it's time to establish it now. Please listen to me. Just follow with the instructions. Be childlike in your heart and let God give you a testimony. Are we together now? He said, while men slept, the enemy came and sowed tears, sowed weed among the, the I mean, uh, uh, among the, 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 the wheat. And he, we are going to destroy everything. For this purpose was the Son of God made manifest. I'm going to pray and at the count of three, I will ask you to shout that name. Right now. I don't know what kind of bondage I'm seeing this night. But except God is not God, you must be free. Right now in the name that is above all names. I pray for individuals and families alike. It is true that there are yokes and ordinances of darkness. That have held men bound. But in the name of Jesus everywhere here overflow one two three outside as you shout that name that is above all names i decree and declare that everything that is not the planting of god in your life and family must jump out of your destiny at the count of three one two three shout jesus i command forces and your go now go now Release destiny. Release destiny. Elabarakatoshe pekeretos. Heliabratos keperekatos. Every ordinance that is not the planting of God, let it go now. Let it go now. I'm speaking by what I'm seeing in the spirit. Let it go now. I'm seeing a vision of a man with a handkerchief wiping the tears of a woman and I know that this is, is symbolic because the woman stands for the bride, the church and I'm seeing the Bible says he will wipe away every tear. I don't know what family and what person came here crying. But the Bible says to comfort they that mourn. I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let an anointing come upon your life now. That terminates everything that brings tears. That terminates everything that brings tears.
Bring them out. Hallelujah. Young lady, please shift this one. You, lift your hands. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. Oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah Yahweh eh Oh yeah yeah say Oh yeah yeah oh yeah oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah oh yeah Yahweh Yahweh Oh yeah yeah say My friend, lift your hands. This, yes, you. The Lord is granting you the spirit of revelation. I saw something come upon your eyes, and the Lord is saying He's taking you to dimensions of revelation. Let her go now. Now, release her family. Now, in the name of Jesus. Please listen. I, I know that we don't have time, but please, I want you to, every time the Lord shows me this, then I know that he wants me to move around. I begin to see lights, a similitude of angels by my left and right. And it's, it's, a, very, it's a very mysterious way that God moves to touch people. When this begins to happen, all I need to do is, you don't have to touch me, just move around your road. Listen to me, except God is not God. As he has anointed, as I pass your row, if there is anything that is not of God, it must let you go. Are we together now? So please, you pray. The moment we do that, then we'll begin to minister to the sick. These things are signs and wonders. They are supernatural. They are supernatural even by the Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Please... I just want you to believe by faith just believe by faith and then as i pass the lord is going to touch you it will be the end of it's not something you can do anything about you are under the influence of the anointing are we together now thank you jesus that everything that is not of god must give way in the name of jesus christ i decree and declare right now by the power of the holy spirit let there be liberty now liberty now in the name of jesus madam be free i take it out of your life now the hand of god is upon you in the name of jesus christ receive the lord is touching you i'm seeing god's taking something out of someone's stomach here is going now now i release it now be free now be free now be free now in the name of jesus be free now i'm seeing fire rising from this row just from i don't know who it is but fire is coming on someone from this row Right now, in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare. Shalaparuka tapariketet. Can they hear me?
Keep praying. Keep praying. Keep praying. Something is leaving you. I'm standing here. There is the power of the Holy Spirit is setting someone free here within this place right now in the name of Jesus Christ. 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 In the name of Jesus. Help that woman, please. She's holding a baby. In the name of Jesus Christ, I stretch my hands here. Everything that must leave anyone, I declare it must go now by the power of the Holy Ghost. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Please, all of you here, just lift your hands. Right now, I stretch my hands. Now, something is coming on people right here. Be free now, 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 now. Now! Keep praying, lift your voice. Overflow one, keep praying. Something is about to change in your life now. Please, you don't have to touch me. And I want you to help everybody close to you. As I pass, the anointing of the Spirit is touching everything that needs to leave. Thank you, Jesus. Be free now. 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 That anointing is touching you right now. Be free. Be free. Be free. Be free. I take it out of you right now. The fire of the Holy Spirit. Right here where I'm standing. Right here where I'm standing. The Lord is taking something out of your life. Be free. I'm standing here and the Lord is saying it is over. He's speaking to someone. It is over. An anointing is coming on you now. It is over. 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 Shalakata. Over. Madam, be free now. The power of God is touching someone here. In the name of Jesus, be free. In the name of Jesus, be free. Be free. Be free. Be free. Be free. Please help them help your neighbor so they don't enjoy themselves be free now in the name of Jesus I declare and declare be free be free be free every devil of darkness be free now. please open your heart and receive stretch my hands here anything that help be free now be free now be free now be free now a chain a chain around here i don't know who that person is but i lose you now as i stand here i lose you now by the spirit of the living god i lose you now i lose you now hallelujah overflow one i don't know if i'm able to walk around it's working now please believe it's a few minutes God is touching you you came here so that he will visit you it's impossible to not testify now please look at me overflow too I'm not going to pass in your midst I will walk right here and as I walk the power of the Holy Spirit will begin to touch you thank you Jesus be free now be free now by the anointing of the Holy Spirit now 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 be free. I take away every reproach. I take away every reproach. You can't stand it. No, it's impossible. It's impossible. We're talking of the anointing here. Every reproach, go now. Every reproach, go now. Every reproach, go now. I stretch my hands here. Go now. Go now. Every reproach. Every reproach, go now, go now. I release your destiny. What you standing here, I'm passing now. The power of God is coming on you. Be free. Praise the Lord. Okay. Um, I'm going to walk around. I may not go row by row. Please, let your heart be open. Please, accept God is not God.
whatever it is that has held you as I pass by the spirit the power of God comes on you some of you will be receiving impartation it's not everybody that is going to just be free from whatever it is father in the name of Jesus honor your word right now in the name of Jesus Christ thank you Jesus right now before I may not be able to move, but please lift your hands. All of you, at the count of three, overflow three, let me hear you shout the name Jesus. The moment you shout that name, I'm seeing like, I'm seeing like fire coming out of people. This is something living people. Are you ready now? One, two, three. Be free now. Be free now. Be free now. Be free now. From the front to the be free now in the name of Jesus. I release your destiny now. I release your destiny now. Madam, look at me. I set her free now. Release her destiny right now. That woman you are holding. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Listen, I declare to you. I, I release speed inside. I want to pray that prayer now. I don't know what has slowed you down. Overflow three. From the front to the back. May the grace for speed come on you now. May the grace for speed come on you now. Please, whether you are an usher or not, whether you are an usher or not, help anybody under the anointing close to you. In the name of Jesus, I don't know what has held your destiny bound, but in the name of Jesus, one more time, I want you to shout the name Jesus at the count of three. One, two, three. Be free now. Be free now. You came for a miracle service. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please look at me. Overflow 3, look at me. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me a family. I will soon walk out, but I just want you to know you are part of the and that it doesn't matter whether you are inside or outside. The Lord is showing me a family here. There is a plague of sickness. Everybody from father to the last child. There is nobody who is fine. Right now as I'm speaking, the power of God is coming upon that family right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Overflow 3. I'm seeing the number 21. This is the healing anointing coming on 21 people. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. This is not a healing miracle. This is the anointing to heal. Right now, from the front to the back, upon gentlemen and upon ladies, receive that grace. Receive that grace now. Receive that grace now. Receive that grace now. Please, everyone, overflow. One, two, three, main auditorium. Please open your mouth and begin to pray in the spirit and declare that everything the Lord is doing must find expression in your life. Lift your voice and pray.
Please lift your voice and pray. Please lift your voice and pray. 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 God is changing something in someone's body. A blood disease. Just right where I'm standing. A blood disease is living right now. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You see, let me tell you, when, when we do these things, we are not wasting time at all. You need to see what the Lord um, did in some of those overflows. There are people who have real issues. And sometimes, Madam, please lift your hands. I'd like you to shout Jesus as loud as you can. Let the name of the Lord be praised. The spirit of prayer. When I was in overflow three, I saw that grace. Would do an impartation, but it's in this season. There is a spirit of prayer and supplication that is coming upon the body of Christ, especially in Zaria. There is a spirit and there is a grace for prayer. In the name of Jesus. Take that grace now. There is a grace and there is a spirit of prayer that is coming upon the body of Christ. You don't pray just by self-will. There is an agency. I declare now in this main auditorium, overflow one, overflow two, overflow three, I stand by the spirit and I declare receive a baptism of this spirit. Flames upon your prayer life. Flames upon your prayer life. Flames upon your prayer life. I declare capacity in your spirit man. Capacity. I swing open the door for utterance in prayer. Grace to pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Someone in the media stand is receiving a baptism of the spirit of prayer a fresh grace a baptism of prayer hallelujah you see let me tell you this please listen one of the systems for enforcing dominion on earth is the ability to legislate in the place of prayer and when the saints cannot pray and pray with understanding then nothing will change within their territory an attack on your prayer life is a real attack on your spiritual life nobody prays out of convenience there is a grace that must come upon a man to pray hallelujah if you are in ministry i pray again for the grace for prayer let me tell you if you are a man of god and you are not a man of prayer you are not in ministry believe me you are not in ministry it's only a matter of time you will know you are not in ministry i decree and declare a supply of the spirit an ability from heaven upon men and women of god that anyone who has the call of god upon his life whether you know it or not the grace to pray take it now 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 the grace to travail not give me tea and bread not give me tea and bread to pray destiny altering prayers Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We'll quickly minister to the sick now. Um, please listen. For those of you who are coming for the first time, we usually 
take prayer requests that I pray for now. And if you have not written your prayer request, please do so. You can get a notebook or just beckon on someone by your left and right to just give you an opportunity to write. While we are doing that, please, um, I will minister to those overflow one. Okay, the main auditorium and overflow two. Please listen. Main auditorium and overflow two. Um, when I ask you to come, you will come and stand in front here. You will be ministered to right here. Overflow one, you will stand in front of your projector stand. That away from the canopy to allow for space. Now, um, will I call it overflow 2B now? The overflow that extends to second equa. Someone will come there to minister. All those who are trusting God for healings, protocol ushers, please just coordinate them. You will stand in front there and then overflow three. Um, okay, there's another overflow down towards overflow three. Um, they will join the ones at they will join the ones at um, the second equa area. So let that be a single overflow too. And then finally, overflow three. You can walk to the front of your projector stand. All of you who desire to be prayed for. We believe in the healing power of Jesus. I believe in miracles. And our time is gone. You'll be ministered to very fast. And then we'll tidy up other things. Whilst that is going on, please, we're trying to conserve time. You see that a, a standard miracle service has to really be a vigil. If you want to do a thorough walk, you're not going to be able to do a thorough walk within two or three hours. But we're trying to just do the best we can do with the time that we have. While you are coming out, please, ushers, PR, join them or any other department um, to collect the, the prayer request. Those online, you can connect by faith if you're trusting God for healing and you can submit your prayer request and then it will be prayed for here. Praise the Lord. I believe in miracles. If you have written your prayer request, um, the ushers or you'll find a few people who will lift up your hands or lift up baskets and you'll be allowed to put it there now very quickly those trusting god to be ministered to um for any kind of healing make your way out quickly just like i've designated please quickly you come stand here by faith overflow one in front of your projector stand overflow three in front of your projector stand overflow two you can join um, those in the main auditorium here. I hope I'm doing the right thing. And then overflow 2B and 2C, let me call it now. 2B extending to second equa and 2C extending to the gate of the third overflow. All of you together will form one overflow and then we'll minister very, very fast. Very, very fast so that we can finish. While you are doing that, please... Please let me advise, especially for those outside, as you are walking out, make sure your phones, your bags, and any of your belongings is safe. And then help those under the anointing. God is delivering people, setting people free. And let's just let him be God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Accept the people ministering to you, ask you questions. Don't worry. Just a touch, and then you'll be back to your seat. And check yourself whether you're on a wheelchair or on a crutch or sitting whatever the situation is whilst they touch and they minister just expect a miracle hallelujah father we give you praise in the name of Jesus within the time we have we pray that your healing power will flow let the sick be healed transform our lives visit us in a new way glorify Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Let incurable situations live. And I pray, God, that you give your people testimonies. In the name of Jesus Christ. In a Jericho, Sir King Say, 
These are the guys that came from um, where? You came from Thailand. This gentleman is a professional footballer. Where's your colleague? Where are you? Come. We salute your coming. Both of them are professional footballers. What happened to your legs? Our last league match last year, so I got a fracture from there. And from there, it's affected your career. You're a footballer too. You came all the way from Thailand. You believe Jesus will heal you? These are your, you see, you cannot, I don't even know what this, this does. I asked to stop because they are, we're having some interesting cases today. Please shift. God is doing a serious miracle for this lady. Said she had, is it ovarian cancer? Ovarian what? Something like that. Mama? Oh dear. Look what God is doing. She will be healed, eh? Amen. Mm. Because when I looked at her, I did not see a pregnancy. I saw something that looked like a mass of something. This is demonic. Huh? Where are you from, madam? Where did you come from? From Venice, I'm from Kano. From Kano? Yes. Jesus. Look what is happening. Let her be healed now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Mama, don't cry. Cancer, I speak to you. You have a name, you have a voice. Release this lady now. 
in the name of Jesus my friend look at me you came all the way from Thailand in the name of Jesus Christ who is the son of the living God this fractured leg I fix it back now you see what is happening to you what do you feel happening to you huh look at me go run Don't mind them, just focus on me. If you're having pain, we're not acting here. Huh? So if you're having any, a miracle has happened to you. When I held your leg, I felt the power of God moving through you. You see, this thing you see is a very demonic thing. It's not about fracture. Do you understand? Number one, come, my friend. You're together too. I want to pray for you. You see, God is looking for people to represent him in every sphere. Huh? Just because you're footballers, doesn't mean that you ignore God many footballers don't love Jesus they love football and they love the money that comes with it but we're not only here God has perfected this let me pray on the x-ray please father in the name of Jesus let this miracle remain forever Amen. I want to pray for both of you I'll, I'll see you after the service and just say hi since you came just to honor you but listen to me I'm sure I don't know you have never seen you can I prophesy on your career in the name of Jesus the son of the living God from today let the anointing of the Holy Ghost you are a footballer but you play by the anointing my friend it takes more than just kicking a ball I release the grace to excel and for you I release the grace to excel right now two of you will return back to Thailand and the Lord will honor you in Jesus name God bless you Thank you so much for your patience. We're about to pray on the requests. I believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. And I truly believe that as we pray on these requests, that every situation that has defied God, it must answer to the name of the Lord. Let her go now. I curse you by the God of heaven. Out now! Who else praise the lord please let's rise thank you for your patience it's a miracle service if you are yet to submit your request please go ahead please go ahead hallelujah we have gotten all kinds of humbling testimonies from this revelation this is this is a revelation that God gave as a communication of his love and the depth of his desire to see people touched not everybody can be prophesied to not everybody may be personally ministered to but this is a representation of your pain is a representation of your expectation and please I want you to believe release your faith you may not have come out requiring healing and with all the ministrations you may not have been directly ministered to I want you to believe because this is representing you before God I want you to stretch your hands here and pray passionately pray passionately You're not done. that Lord this that I'm bringing before you this will be the last I truly believe make sure we collect for those outside if you are still being ministered to no problem you can just focus while you are receiving hallelujah praise the lord praise the lord i'm seeing fire burn on this thing i wanted to go down on my knees but i just saw fire burning and the lord said i should declare 
and speak over it. I'll declare and speak over it. Um, there is one gentleman and one lady. One gentleman, one lady. The power of God is coming on two of them. The moment that happens, then I have the release to speak on this. These are signs and wonders, my precious people. Sometimes God does these things and we have no idea why he does them. A gentleman and a lady. This is the sign that God gave me. Now I'm ready to pray. In the name of Jesus, believe with me. I stand upon this request now and I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit every request laid before God here I decree and declare it lives your life forever please believe please believe we are believers in the mighty name of Jesus Christ hear me the Bible says these Egyptians you see today he said you will see them no more forever therefore I declare that everything that defied the name of the Lord represented here I declare it is buried now and forever every impossible situation written here situations that men do not have the ability to produce or provide i call on the god of heaven the creator of the ends of the earth in the name of jesus let there be supernatural miracles supernatural miracles let there be supernatural miracles that time we had not started this a woman who had been barren for eight years wrote a request then we had not started this i'm not sure I, I think koinonia just started and when it was brought to me one of our precious ladies she used to be in the media and i held and i just heard that it was done in the spirit and i said that was it and the woman had three plates one two three now that's not the miracle the miracle is that none of the child had any kind of issue whatsoever three of them are alive today i have seen them they are strong they are fine the bible says that everybody who ministers should minister according to the measure of grace when you attempt something higher than your level of anointing except god instructs you it is pride we understand our spiritual jurisdictions there are things that you have there are things you may not have now in experience i want to pray for you there is most of the requests here it is favor that will produce it listen listen many requests that we are writing whether it's a whole notebook you could as well get a clean sheet of paper and just write one word favor and that would be it it would still be worth it they are just different versions of expressing your need for favor i want to pray that grace there is a real grace for favor in the name of jesus christ favor listen favor is not having money favor is access to the hearts of men it's more than money you can have money and not be favored the proof of favor is not just money the proof of favor is the loyalty of men in the name that is above all names i decree and declare let the grace for favor rest upon you now let it bring about the accomplishment of this request in the mighty name of Jesus there are requests written here it is mercy that will answer it the Bible says even the lawful captive shall be delivered I declare mercy upon this request 
in the name of Jesus Christ father I stand representing the desires the pain of your people you have done it again and again and we will never take you for granted Lord let it please you that everyone who has submitted a request may they have the opportunity to stand upon this altar to testify in the name of Jesus Christ the spirit that brought the need for these requests I banish them from your life in the name of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus Christ may it please the Lord that testimonies will come out of this now please lift your hands we're closing let me speak over your life it is always my honor to do this because I have seen the creative power of the Word of God I've seen its ability to turn to change to transform lives there was a very humbling testimony something a gentleman this is something that happened like last week I thought he would come and share maybe he would come down to Zaria and testify himself that's why I didn't say it he works in somewhere like a factory or something and he's given the key to the warehouse now I don't know what kind of carelessness happened whether his friends or whatever this gentleman just misplaced the key and these are very serious security keys it's not like something you just carry a stone and hit and buy another one and it became a serious issue for him and they threatened to call the police they threatened to do a lot of things and I was about to sleep when I got his text he had been calling and I said please send the text and he sent it and I looked at it and he said I'm about to lose my job my wife my children this and that and suddenly the anointing of the Spirit came upon me on my bed I laid hands and I sent him a text I said find that key that's all I wrote God is my witness I will not stand here at this level and corner stories this gentleman said he just was listening to a koinonia message and he slept i'm telling you the truth under god and he saw me in a dream this is what he said i was not there he saw me giving him the key in a dream he woke up in the morning listen listen that's not a miracle he woke up in the morning opened his drawer and the key was there <laughs> truly speaking you see let me tell you this if you are struggling to believe this you are not a christian because the very foundation of christianity was a strange miracle that a spirit leaves his body and returns back at will please let's not limit god i say these things to challenge us these versions of unbelief we continue to endorse is not going to make our lives fruitful you have nothing to lose to stretch your faith all the way don't they limited God in the wilderness by saying can God make a way hallelujah what is strange about an angel of the Lord coming to drop a key somewhere didn't you hear the testimony of the gentleman who a stranger called him and gave him a number he shared here you remember gave him a number he calls a general in the army and they say who gave you my number and he doesn't know who gave him his number bottom line he gets a job as a result look let me tell you there is nothing God cannot do I'm praying for you the dimension of testimonies that will it will shock you the testifier first receive it now receive that strange order of testimonies In the name of Jesus Christ a gentleman here one of the years checked his name on admission list and clearly saw that he didn't get anything he frowned his way to his father who said you are a foolish son I'm not surprised and he came I don't know if it was miracle service or one of the prayers 
returns back to the board and checks and there's his name admission list see let me tell you this let me tell you this you you are liberty to not believe but don't say it's a lie just say i don't believe based on my work with god and based on what i have not seen but don't say it's a lie he told nathaniel you will see greater things than this jesus said it are we together strangers that must arise and step in over your issue in the name of jesus i connect you to them i connect you to them i connect you to them by the power of the holy spirit there are times you have the gift but you do not have access to the ears of the kings you will need those who are already in the palace otherwise joseph you will remain in the prison i pray for you whoever has access to the ears of your helper may god compel them to speak about you in the name of jesus christ i pray for everyone trusting god for a job in the name that is above all names please believe and by the power that is in the name of jesus i declare that between now and august by the grace and the name of the lord return with a miracle job <laughs> hallelujah i pray for those in ministry the fire that must come on a man john wesley says set yourself on fire and the world will come to watch you burn i decree and declare may that fire come upon your life every dying business in this place hear the word of the lord i speak to you come back to life now and to live to deliver those appointed to death there are people appointed to death i heard a man of god give a story of a gentleman who missed a flight he missed a flight and the plane crashed and everybody was happy he missed the flight they didn't know he followed a train that crashed are we together you miss a flight and you are saying lord i give you praise you enter a train and you die these are people appointed to death in the name of jesus death is a spirit it has a voice it can hear i forbid the earth from receiving your body in the mighty name of jesus christ every family under financial captivity every family here and every individual sincerely trusting god to come through for you financially I pray for you. May the month of June be your month. Please believe me. May the month of June be your month. Let the hand of God, let the grace of God rest upon you. God causing all grace to abound towards you. May you have sufficiency in the name of Jesus Christ. every project you have in front of you whether it is a building project whether it's a spiritual growth project whether it's a ministry expansion project whether it's a business project it says the hand of Zerubbabel that began this work that same hand will complete it I pray in the name of Jesus whatever project you have the grace to execute it let it be given to you now I don't know what has destroyed your appetite for the word of God. You will open your Bible and look at it like this, like a storybook. You can read a book of 600 pages in one week, but you can hardly finish one page of the Bible. It's an attack. I decree and declare. Let the spirit of revelation and a passion for the word of God, may it rest upon you. May it rest upon you. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Two more prayer points and we're done. Herein is our Father glorified that ye bear much fruit. The grace for results is called the power of performance. Receive that grace now. I speak to you, produce results. Produce results. Repeated results. Predictable results. In every area of your life. Be fruitful in the name of Jesus Christ. Finally, let me pray for you. Everything that is alive grows. When you give birth to a child and he cannot walk after three years, no teeth, he can't talk, you know that something is wrong with that child. Are we true? Your destiny is like a child. If it is alive, then it should grow. When a tree grows and begins to mature, it begins to branch are we together now and then it starts to invite the birds it also invites men to come and partake of the fruit I don't know what has taunted your growth in life and in destiny but as we cap up this month's miracle service especially your spiritual life some of you you've not backslidden but sincerely you've been at the same level it's not like you've gone down as it were but you've just rotated around the same experience i declare rise to a new level rise to a new level rise to a new level thank you jesus thank you jesus let me encourage you listen make sure to pay attention to the testimonies that god gives you and be sure to make it a duty to testify let it not be a burden to you are not testimonies don't just endorse that a man of god is anointed testimonies are proof to men to creation to all and sundry that god is love and that he is still mighty testimonies are a tool that consolidates the convictions of men and creates the same in others it's important to not withhold testimony. Someone's faith is depending on the miracle that comes from releasing your faith. So be sure that as God touches you, you may not have the luxury of coming down to Zaria for those of you who are far, but we're on various social media platforms. You can always make your testimonies known and then you can contact our helplines and then someone will be there to document your testimony and it will edify the people of God. Praise the Lord still standing everyone our time is gone i want to make an altar call i believe in salvation listen it matters that in a crowd of people like this and many more connected around the world it matters that we give people an opportunity to encounter jesus let's settle down please let me have your attention lend me your attention for a minute or two you are here in the main auditorium overflow one overflow two and all the auxiliary overflows overflow three and online and you know that you are yet to truly surrender your all to jesus and receive of his life or there are others who are saying apostle i've given my life to jesus but i need to rededicate my life to start a work with him that is truthful and serious wherever you are and whatever category you belong to our time is gone just one minute for this aside from overflow three because of time i will request overflow one overflow two wherever you are making this altar call and those in quickly leave your seat very boldly and i like for you to come and stand right here let it be my honor and my joy to lead you to jesus i don't expect you to still be thinking about it the Holy Spirit should already be convicting you. Do not wait for anyone to come. Be the first. Let me for time's sake count one to five. One. Quickly, please, if you're coming, hurry up. Win that war. Do not say we came in group and I do not want anybody to know that I'm handing over my life to Jesus. Receiving the life of God is not a funeral service. 
is something that is worth celebrating. Koinonia, are you appreciating them? Keep coming. Come to Jesus. Young and old, come to him. The Bible says, all who will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. I don't believe this is all overflow one, overflow two. Join them very quickly. And the Lord added daily to the church as many as should be saved. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Make sure that overflow three has uh, the people out. God bless you. I salute your courage. Please lift your right hand as I lead you to make this prayer. You are not just reciting a poem. This is a real um, conversation between you and the Lord. You are receiving his life and you are handing over yours. Say after me, Lord Jesus. Say it from the depth of your heart, Lord Jesus. Some of you come for altar call when we are saying in Jesus' name. You are not born again. You should come. The, the, the prayer, you don't stroll around and then round up you don't round up the prayer of salvation you participate with your heart man believes are we together okay lord jesus i believe that you are the son of god i believe that you died for me i believe that you resurrected for me tonight I receive your life I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and I declare that I reign in life I have the life of God and I declare that from tonight I am a child of God I move forward ever and backward never amen Keep your hands lifted. Father, thank you for these ones. Precious as they are, we receive them into the fold, the family of faith. And I declare their sins forgiven. And I declare by the authority of scripture that beginning from today, the grace to walk victoriously is released upon them. Holy Spirit, I commend them to you that you continue your ministry in their lives. Make mighty men and women out of them. I bless you with the grace that grants you capacity to stay consistent. May the Lord bless you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. I salute all of you for making this decision. And then for those who also made online, thank you for making this decision. Very quickly, I'd like you to follow. the someone waving her hands, a lady. And all of you in concert, please follow her. And um, there will be a group of people to receive you very briefly. And you'll be back. Let's honor them. Hello, scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, attend to my sins, incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us. Thank you.